It's Christmas time, and yeah, you want to get to the instructions. I know, don't worry. There is a link in the description if you want to get to those real quick, but if that's why you're here, stick with me for half a second. I think you'll like where I'm going with this. It's Christmas time, and for Christmas, let's say you get a piece of software or hardware that you think is pretty cool and you want to do some cool things with it. But it turns out you can't do those cool things. Maybe there's a caveat that's really nasty. Now, if you're like me, your immediate instinct is, if it wasn't designed to work the way I want it to, it's time to bend it to my will. So you look up ways to try and get it to work the way that you want, and you might find out that it's near impossible. And all of the things telling you this will be official posts or tech radar articles saying something like, Unfortunately, some users have some complaints with our product and wish it to be used in a way not intended. To bring the best possible experience to you, our customer, it had to be this way, and we suggest you don't look into ways to subvert this. Now, you see, I feel those don't take my feelings into account. I don't really find any validation in this, to be honest. So, because some of you might have received an Oculus Quest 2 for Christmas, and found out it requires you to sign into Facebook so it can collect data on you, including but not limited to physical features, you might find yourself pretty fucking angry. So I'm going to validate that shit, and we're going to go over how to use as little of Cox Zuckerberg's data harvesting scam as possible. And I ain't being nice, I ain't benefiting no doubt. Fuck em, I'm with you on this. Let's get started. So first, of course, why the Oculus Quest 2? Is it because it was the cheapest thing I could get? Yes, but obviously, if you've seen any of my other videos, I make it pretty clear how I feel about invasive tech companies. Helicopter Microsoft HQ to Siberia! Okay, so, how do we jailbreak it? Well, I feel like the best description of that is the jailbreaking instructions on the website ARVR Tips. When you get to the part that says how to jailbreak your Oculus 2, it says, coming soon. So, unfortunately, at time of writing, you're fucked. But again, that's at time of writing. I'll get more into that later. So we need to mitigate as much as possible, or just give blatantly wrong info. So to do that, let's go over what info Facebook takes. Miscellaneous physical features. Anything you post to Oculus or Facebook, including Facebook name, bios, avatars, profile pictures, and credit card information if you buy something. Though that one is thankfully optional and they're probably not gonna sell your credit card information. Any settings you set in apps via cookies. Really anything you do in Oculus, including any web browsing, YouTube video watching, or anything else down to where you move in your room. The environment you're using Oculus in, including but not limited to whether or not you have stuff on the floor. Your location data through your phone. Information from third parties. If you use an app from not Facebook on the Facebook thing, the people who made the app might send the data to Facebook because Facebook probably said they had to if they wanted to exist on their platform. And any system information, including PC and phone specs. So now we know what they get, what do they do with it? Well, in-house, they use that data to develop Oculus based on who's using it, i.e. who they should target it to and how they should build it, essentially. And outside of the house, they sell that data to advertisers to advertise to you better. Do they give it to anyone else? Probably more than fucking likely. They're really vague about who they give it to, though. There's a point in the thing that says to research and innovate for social good, and... Well, if you think giving the data to the people who gave it to the Trump campaign is a social good, then... Sure. The thing is, no one knows outside of Facebook. And I ain't got the inside scoop, so I couldn't fucking tell you. Alright, let's get going with the, uh, the actual instructions. Step 1. Open the box and download the update. Here we have our Oculus 2 all boxed up. Firstly, we'll want to cut into the little protective layer of plastic then gently peel it off. After that, you'll want to carefully remove the Oculus' sleeve. So now we have our Oculus cardboard box. Let's see what's inside. Oh, almost forgot to do the cleansing ritual. And now that we've opened the whole thing up, I think it's about time to put on the headset. Okay, but the reason I'm doing an unboxing is because I was looking through for the instructions to find out when it makes you sign into your Facebook account. At no point does it tell you you even need to. It just tells you to turn on the headset and follow the instructions the headset gives you. So you do, and now the headset is outside of your control and you can't do nothing until this part is done. It pairs the controller, you watch a video with Fortnite characters, and it updates. When the updating is mostly done, 
That's when the Facebook inning starts. You need to pair it to your phone using the Oculus app. Well, that's not super great. But before we worry about that, let's actually make our Facebook account. Step two, let's actually make our Facebook account. Yeah, we do need to make a Facebook account. As it stands, we whole ass entirely cannot use an Oculus without one. But the thing is about Facebook data is they can only ever take what you give them. They will take everything you give them, but if you give them something that isn't true, that's what they'll take. Fucking clearly. Now you're gonna wanna do this on a PC, and you're gonna wanna suit up your browser with some tools. You're gonna want an ad blocker, obviously, then you're going to want to install Ghostery. This little program finds trackers that track your data and blocks them while you're browsing the web. It's kinda necessary for, like, existing on the internet in general. Anyway, after you got these, go to Facebook and create the account. So, one of the things about using a Facebook account is that it wants you to use your real name. Why? Well, they're super vague about that. The official stated reason is to protect from scams and phishing and impersonation, which to me seems strange seeing as scammers and fishers will always have a real sounding fake name, and the impersonation one seems strange as there are multiple people in the real world with the same name. Seems like an oversight, though I'd follow Hanlon's tech razor on this. Never attribute to malice that which can be adequately explained by stupidity, except in regard to tech companies, in which case the opposite is true. Data tied to a real name sells. Why the fuck do you think Fart Fuckerberg wants your real name? Come on now. Though they did relax that policy in 2015 because oh, it sucks fucking ass for lots and lots of reasons. Anyway, enough farting around with background info. Let's put in our name. Now I hate to say this, but Thel isn't my real name, but it is a pretty good one to use, and that's the thing. You need to use a name that sounds like it could be real. Like, don't go with Assman69. You need to do something that isn't likely to get flagged by Facebook. But watch out, you can also be flagged by fucking narcs on Facebook. Best way to avoid this is to not put anyone on your friends list, Lamau. Just don't use it as a Facebook account. Next up, we're gonna wanna make a ProtonMail account. ProtonMail is a super encrypted open source email that's just about the safest thing you can get. Facebook probably isn't trying to get into your emails, to be entirely honest, but even so, using one of these for just Oculus gives them a little less data on you than they could have. I already had one for playing Moodle Jazz over Discord while cooking on call with people, so, you know, that'll work for me. Type all that shit in, give yourself a picture, and put in a bio just to be safe. Now, is this a guarantee it won't get deleted? No, not at all. Even if you give them all of this information correctly, I cannot guarantee it will not get deleted. If you buy a bunch of stuff on the Oculus Store, you could lose all of it if Facebook decides to delete your account. But let's not think about that right now. Now we have a different thing we have to deal with. Step three, installing the phone app. Now that we got a Facebook account, we install the Oculus app and it needs our location data. It will refuse to update without our location data. This is probably the worst part of the whole thing because I cannot fucking fathom why it would need that. It could pair through Bluetooth, or it could pair through a shared Wi-Fi, or it could pair not at all because the next step is delete the fucking phone app because you don't need it anymore after it pairs once. It didn't seem to need the phone to install much of the update, and it finished installing immediately after you gave it your location data. What the fuck? So I guess drive the headset out to a Starbucks or a McDonald's or somewhere with Wi-Fi, give it the location data of that place, pair your headset with the phone app, then delete the fucking phone app because you don't need it anymore after this step. But after that, it'll start working. Bada bing, bada boom. Anyway, welcome to the Oculus Home. Everything you do from here on out is data to be recorded. Yay! So let's say you want to have no data go to Facebook from here on out. Well, unfortunately, you couldn't do this previously because it needed to update, but one way you could do it now is just unplug your router. If it can't connect to the internet, it can't send data. Unfortunately, if you want to play an online game like VR Chat, you're fucked. In fact, if you want to download a game, you're fucked. So if you want to use the Oculus alone, 
you're fucked. But you do have a Facebook account that is not in your name, so the data they're collecting and sending is about Assman69 or whatever. Though, your IP is also getting logged. And I would suggest using a VPN, but there's no way to get one of those onto the headset. So... Step 5. Setting up and dealing with Oculus Link. Now, let's say you wanted to use it as a headset for your PC. And why wouldn't you? The VR games on the PC are the best ones out there, and the back-end software used to run them is pretty great. The software will talk to literally anything, including websites and just weird shit, like a program that turns Miku Miku Dance into a VR world space. It supports every headset, and isn't tied into Facebook at all. It's so good that originally my idea for mitigating Facebook on the PC was just use Steam VR, Lamau. But, well, Oculus is a fucking stinker. Let's get into that. So the first thing you'll need is a PC that costs the same amount of money as the headset for the graphics card alone. If you got one of those lying around, great! So what you'll need to do is you'll get a cord that can connect the Quest to the PC. You can find one on Oculus's website for... 80 fucking dollars? No, you do not need to pay 80 fucking dollars for a goddamn USB-C to USB 3.0 cable. I found this one for 20 bucks. The highest they go for anywhere else is maybe 40. This is not a special cable that is the only thing that works with the Oculus. This is a standard USB-C to USB 3.0 cable. They sell this shit to gut people who don't know what that is and don't know to look for other alternatives. It is 100% a disgusting and goddamn whole ass grift and it is 0% surprising that they would do that. Anyway, the next step is you need to install the Oculus app to your PC. This is an app that has three EXEs, all of which launch when you start your computer. Not when you open the app, when you start your computer. Which is, you know, super sus. And it's 10 fucking gigabytes. For what purpose? So I was going to say what you should do is make an outbound exception for your firewall for these three EXEs, so, you know, they can't upload anything from your computer. But, unfortunately, eventually this caused a weird bug where Oculus would think I hadn't checked the settings allowing SteamVR to run. And to be entirely honest, I don't even know if that would do anything. So, use a VPN! If you still don't know what that is in the year of our Lord 2020, essentially it's a thing that routes your internet data through a middleman and encrypts the fuck out of it so it can't be grabbed. And the person who's getting the data can't tell who it's from or who it's sending its data to. Even your ISP won't be able to see your shit. Nord, Express, Surfshark, Proton, any of them will work. Though, of course, they cost a subscription fee, and this will really only stop them from getting your IP address. All the stuff that you still do on the Oculus will still be uploaded and sold as user data. Anyway, after you're done with that, you can launch Steam VR and play VR games through Steam. Valve has stated they will not sell your data, though they still track some, but that's... You know, it's better. But, and here's a problem with Steam VR, if the Oculus app catches something that it recognizes running in Steam, it'll automatically add it to your Oculus library and sometimes even run it through Oculus instead of Steam. But then again, Oculus kinda holds you hostage if you do have a choice, because it requires its horrible, invasive, resource-hogging software in an incredibly resource-heavy environment to run along with SteamVR. So if you don't want your games to lag, you're better off just running it through the Oculus app that can't fucking change resolution without restarting the whole program. Like, this thing makes me wish I was still using Windows Mixed Reality, never thought I'd say that, but at least there I could change the f fucking settings at all! Basically, after a few weeks of testing, I can say, you're honestly better off just running everything through the Oculus app, Jesus Christ. Even though, yeah, it's overall a worse program, that instead of supporting everything on and off its platform, it is explicitly built to not do that. And, oh, I cannot tell you how much I hate that philosophy in the tech world. Oh, wait, I can! I do later in the video! And that's about all you can do. Those are the things that mitigate Facebook on the Oculus Quest, but I might have missed something obvious, and you'll probably will find that in the comments. And if you know what that is, please post it in the comments. We're trying to help people here. But you might be saying, that shit isn't good enough. I want no Facebook. Fuck, dude. Same.
completely agreed, but like I said, at time of writing, no one knows how to do that. But, that doesn't mean there isn't hope. Let's talk about what people have been doing. So it started with Robert Long, the senior software engineer at Mozilla, not to be confused with the serial killer and rapist Bobby Joe Long that shows up when you googled the name. Robert Long made a Twitter post with a bounty. I'm putting up a bounty. Anyone who can jailbreak the Oculus Quest 2 will get a $5,000 payout. Well, I know, I'll match that number said Palmer Lucky, renowned shitbag and founder of Oculus, who added Tim Sweeney and Notch, other renowned shitbags. But the way I see it is if you take money from shitbags and do a service that helps a greater number of people, more fucking power to you. Take that goddamn money. And also, these guys. And if you guys have the fucking money to do it, hell yeah. Now they're all being helped by a group called the XR Safety Initiative, or XRSI. These guys released a 45-page privacy framework to protect users' data in September that was vetted by academics and lawyers and everything. Whether any of the ghouls making VR will follow it is a big fucking question mark, but, you know, they put that out there. It's pushing for the electronic right to repair, which is an ongoing movement to push for legislation to force corporations to give people and repair shops the tools to repair and modify any devices, including, for instance, installing your own software on a headset you paid 300 fucking dollars for. So XRSI set up a community to try and jailbreak the Oculus 2. And on October 26th, someone said they had. This claim was backed up by XRSI. Unfortunately, this was probably not true. On November 10th, a Reddit post pointed out how this jailbreak was probably bullshit. In one respect, because it was an experiment that multiple people tried, and hardly anyone could replicate it or get it to root. But also, because the guy who did it said he could boot Windows XP on it. And the hardware of the Oculus wouldn't do that without an emulator. But even if that was true, us basic bitches still don't have a way to get anything on there that isn't Facebook related. But there's another little bastion of hope. Germany is currently suing Facebook over, specifically, forcing you to use a Facebook account for Oculus. So we could see an unofficial jailbreak soon, or an official untethering. There's a lot of hope out there. But, right now... We are fucked. So basically, Oculus has made it as hard as possible to get through, and it seems to be paying off for them. Except for that fucking lawsuit, Lamau. But, this might have led some of you to start thinking, maybe I'm getting mad at nothing. You know, I wouldn't be having these problems if I just played by the rules. No, no, no. I'm here to vindicate your feelings. Because it is bullshit. They don't need to do this. So why don't we talk about why? So, we live in a system of supply and demand. There will be people who sell something for a certain amount, and if they can sell that for more, they will, and there are people who want to buy something at a certain amount, and if they can't, they won't. When these two meet, you get equilibrium where everyone agrees it's a good price and will change as supply and demand changes. It's a great system that always works perfectly. Like that one time where British landlords wanted the Irish to only grow one type of crop, and then that crop got sick. But then, the free market loving Whig government said, The invisible hand of the free market will fix it! So they just let the free market do everything and everyone was happy and thousands of people didn't starve to death. It was called the Irish Great Potato Abundance. In fact, you know, there might be a more recent example of favoring the economy over people's lives, but I don't know, I haven't heard anything about that, I don't really pay attention to the news. The reason I bring all this up is because the idea of supply and demand is kind of based off the idea that there will always be a limited amount of both supply and demand, because there will be limited resources for supply, and also making something will require some type of work. Software puts a wrench in this idea a little bit. While demand is still limited, and software does take a lot of work to make, if you make one piece of software, you can just copy it infinitely. There is an unlimited supply if you have the hardware to run it, and we're getting to the point where most people have some level of hardware that can run most things. 
And though the proponents of our system of course have a lot to say about freedom, the system itself is very authoritarian in nature. You either participate in it on its terms or you fucking die in the cold. People who write software need to make money because if they don't, the reward for all the legitimate hard work they do will be homelessness and potentially death. And it's fine they make money, they should, but of course, they need to make sure that stuff is in place so that people don't just give their friends an exact copy of the thing they had, or just have someone steal their codebase entirely and sell infinite copies of it. Because if someone does that, they don't make any money. And if they don't make any money, well... But needless to say, this encouraged ghouls who wanted to make a billion fucking dollars to descend like flies to this idea. Ghouls like William H. Gates, who, with his company Microsoft, gained a fun internal logo, Embrace, Extend, and Extinguish. Meaning they would find a niche that was populated by people giving a service for free, or not by Microsoft, do the thing that they were doing, and make their products only compatible with the one that they made to push everyone else the fuck out. The antitrust case filed against them for this specific thing in 2001 was started because retailers couldn't uninstall Internet Explorer and put something else on there if they wanted, which seemed like something that Microsoft was doing to hold a monopoly. The court found that they were also using these same tactics with every other operating system competitor too. Specifically with their code base C++ being described by Gates as being So broad, so deep, and so functional that most ISVs would be crazy not to use it. And it's, it's so deeply embedded in the source code of many Windows apps that there's a huge switching cost to using a different operating system instead. It is this switching cost that has given customers the patience to stick with Windows through all our mistakes, our buggy drivers, our high TCO, our lack of sexy vision at times, and many other difficulties. That's how they do it. They have the tech geeks make some really good and cool things, then have the business and law ghouls make sure that no one else can have it. Needless to say, they could have just worked with everyone else, but they wanted a fucking monopoly. Like, this shit is why I'm afraid they're trying to pull a Disney by buying a Bethesda and all of these other game devs, because becoming a monopoly is just their MO. You know, when they're not firing union workers who want a court case against them, and selling technology to the fucking military. To which, Satya Nadella said to the striking Microsoft workers, Fuck you, we're doing it anyway. Fuck Microsoft. Anyway. You also have Apple, who were real fucking bad, building their software and hardware together making it impossible to modify and difficult as fuck to repair. So if it breaks, you have to buy a new one, and when that happens they can just design it to break, so you need to buy another new one. People are fighting against that. Right to repair bills for tech were first introduced in South Dakota in 2014 and have been introduced into 20 states as of 2019. And the EU has begun drafting right to repair rules. But Apple has fought tooth and nail to keep this from happening. One, by lobbying California lawmakers to shut it down by claiming people will hurt themselves. And also by hiring lobbyists in New York to shut it down. But in Washington, it wasn't blocked by Apple, but guess fucking who? So really, Facebook is just doing the same shit that everyone else is. Closing their shit off, closing their hardware if you don't use their software, but it being Facebook sure does make it exceptionally bad for a very specific reason. They sell your data to ad companies and give it to whoever else. Which is something that, at one time, was a dystopian hypothetical idea that could maybe come to pass, if we're not careful. Back in 1999, DoubleClick, an ad company, and a data broker called Abacus tried to do a merger, but people petitioned the federal government to stop this because it could lead to people's information being used to target ads at them, which was horrible and a fucked up thing that people were very upset about. But in 2002, the merger went through anyway, and then Google bought DoubleClick in 2008, and are, you know, just doing the thing that everyone was terribly afraid would happen in 1999. So, of course, Facebook started doing it too. Most notably, and probably the reason you want to not have Facebook on your new VR headset, is that they gave the data to Cambridge Analytica, who then gave it to the Trump campaign, who then used it to lie a bunch. Cambridge Analytica no longer exists, but Facebook is still selling all of your personal data, including but not limited to physical features that, due to its terms of service, you need to put your real name on. 
And of course, the current and incoming American Whig government wouldn't do anything about anyone selling data, unless of course they were selling it to China, in which case they'd say they'd ban it immediately, and then completely forget about doing that. Well, I wrote all that, but then, like, a day later, it turns out an antitrust lawsuit by the US government was filed, attempting to break up Facebook specifically. Which... Uh, fucking rules! But, uh, that does just give Google, the other people selling your data, a monopoly on selling your data, and they already sell, like, way more than Facebook does, I think, so unless we do something about that. Oh! Well, well, damn, we're on a roll! Let's do these ones next! And, after writing that, it turned out that internal memos sent between the two companies said that they would work together if any antitrust lawsuit hit them. Which is a bad look for people who are ostensibly competing. And, Shark Cockerberg had several internal memos leaked, with some very good points, like that make this whole thing feel a lot like the Microsoft antitrust lawsuit in 2001. The we're getting going into 2021 is two massive antitrust lawsuits against tech giants, then I think I can say 2021 has a chance to be maybe kind of a little bit okay. And, speaking of that... So, the point of this whole video is, none of this is necessary and your complaints are wholly valid. They should not be doing this to you. But I do want to give the benefit of the doubt to the engineers and software coders who made this. Not Zuckerberg, but the people who actually designed and built the thing. You know, the people who did the actual work. They probably weren't the ones who made these stupid ass calls. And if they weren't working for Facebook, they wouldn't make you sign into anything. And it's a pretty good headset. The resolution is really good, and the colors are super fucking vibrant. Like, everything looks really good in it. And one thing that really surprised me was the speakers aren't total dog shit. I mean, I'd still prefer my headphones, but these speakers get the fucking job done. Everything runs really well. There's finger tracking, which could work better, but honestly, I'm happy it's there at all. It's a very good headset. They did a very good job. But, well, that's not the feeling I'm here to vindicate. We all had a bad year. Even outside of the obvious, everyone seems to have several on top of everything. I bet you got a heaping helping of bullshit to go with the garbage everyone was served up. My on top of everything's are several of my family members ended up with non-COVID but really bad medical conditions, some of which did not survive them. My cat died, and I got into a fucking car crash. Yes, this is the car that I was in. Thankfully, everyone walked away from it pretty much entirely unscathed. So, I think we do need some good vibes, and a lot of people are giving those, but I think what I need is to blow off some fucking steam. And what better target than Silicon Valley business schools? Even if they didn't have much to do with the bad shit some of the time. And, truth be told, originally I was going to make the ending of this video a lot more negative, but as I've been making the video, more and more stuff has come out that has just given me a lot of hope. Like, I've had to change several different things in the video because something good happened. So, I think we can go into the new year, not assuming it's going to be great, but assuming it might just be a little bit better. And, if things are a little bit better, it'll be just a little bit easier to make a world that doesn't suck so much fucking ass. Thanks for sticking around. Hey there, if you want more tech reviews and gadget tutorials, you might want to go somewhere else because I don't do a lot of that. But if you like the video essay bits where I talked about the history of stuff, I do have a lot of those and intend to do a lot more in the future, especially if you want to hear about video games. In fact, I got another one coming up soon I think you're really gonna like. Speaking of like, like, subscribe, and comment, and all that jazz. See you next time!